Hey, what are you kids doing? Well, we're inviting people to our church this week. And so a lot of people say, yes, we tie them into the little box. Oh, yeah? Tell me about your church. In the eyes of a child, it's simple to invite someone to church. You're just telling them about something you love. Almost everyone has gone to church at some point in their life, whether it's their christening or Sunday school, Easter or Christmas, or even their wedding. Special events just seem more official when they're happening in a church. So it is simple to invite people. Just tell your neighbors, hey, there are really great things happening every week in our church. And you can consider this your official invitation to come back and join us each Sunday. We'll save a seat for you. Anyway, we did have a lot more people we wanted to invite, but we ran out of balloons. <sighs> Do you have any balloons? What do I look like? A balloon delivery guy? Come here, guys. excited. Come on in. Got their balloons. Give a kid a balloon and man, you just made their day. We got a couple, a couple to try to fit in here. We may have to get some more seats. glad you guys came today. You guys picked a good day to come to church. Why do you think that is? Anybody want to guess? Nope. Be to learn about Jesus. Oh, what? Say that louder. Because you want to learn about Jesus. Oh, I love that answer. But you also get these cool balloons. Are you guys excited about getting a balloon today? Yeah. You know, one of the things, I'm going to brag on these kids for a little bit. One of the things that, that really impresses me about these kids every week, you know, we're, we're focusing on inviting people to church and, and getting people to come here and hear the message of Jesus Christ. Every single week, I ask these kids, whether it's on Sunday morning or Wednesday night, if they brought a friend, if they've, if they've invited a friend, and if they brought a friend. How many of you guys, within the last six months, raise your hand if you've invited a friend to come to church here? Raise it up. If you've invited a friend to come to church. That is awesome. Now, I want to ask you guys this. Why? Do you invite them to come to church? Why do you want them to come to church here? Who can tell me why they, why do you even want them to be here? So they can learn about Jesus. Man, you're just spouting off all those right answers. What did you say? So they can learn about Jesus. So they can learn about Jesus. Well, what's going to make them want to come here and learn about Jesus? Do you guys have fun in church? Yeah. Yeah. And so you have fun and you go to your friends and you say, hey, I'm going to this church that's a lot of fun, and they give us these free balloons, which are really cool. But what's even better than that is they get to tell me how, to, how I can love Jesus more. And that's pretty exciting, isn't it? You guys know in the, in the Bible, one time Jesus was walking along the beach, and he saw these two guys fishing. You know what he said to them? What? What did he say? He said, come and follow him. These are guys that are fishing. They're like, man, I don't know this guy. What, what, do, you, what do you have that makes me want to come follow you? What did he tell them? He, he said, I will, I will make you fishers of men. And it made, he, they, he had so much excitement about him, about what he was doing, that they threw away their nets. They threw away their lives. They gave everything up so that they could do what? so that they could follow Jesus. And that's what we want you guys to do. And you guys are doing that. Now that you're doing that and you're inviting friends to church, what's happening to our kids' church over there on Sunday mornings? We're getting more full, aren't we? In fact, what's our plan? Our plan is to get so big that we take this over right here. <laughs> this will be our church right here. 
if you guys keep inviting your friends. You know what? One of the things, the last thing I want to share with you about what Jesus did. Jesus wants us to invite our friends to church. You know why? Because he invited us. Jesus was the one who invited us. When he hung on that cross, you know what he was doing? He was inviting us to him. And all of you guys accepted that invitation, didn't you? So get excited about that. Get excited about what Jesus gave you so that you can take that to your schools and to your neighborhoods and you can tell them about Jesus and they get excited. So we have about 70 balloons in here. Who's good at math? Me. You're good at math? All right. 70 balloons in a minute. We're going to take those 70 balloons and you guys are going to give them to, to a stranger. Somebody out here that you don't know. And that's going to be a challenge to you to invite somebody to church next week. So those 70 balloons you give to those 70 people out here. And they go invite 70 people. How many more people will be here next week? 70. 70? Okay. 130. Okay, so those, okay, let's say 70. They invite, <laughs> I hope so. so. Okay, let's say they brought 70. 114, I like that number too. Let's go with 70 though, the original 70. Those 70 come to church next week and they loved it. They hear an awesome sermon from Pastor Bruce, and they're like, man, that church is doing stuff. They give kids balloons. We're going to go tell our 70 people, 70 of our friends about it. So the next week, how many more people would be here? 130. Oh, you're close. 140. 140. Is there 140 empty chairs out here? I don't think so. So we're out, me and Pastor Bruce and Pastor Al, we're out buying new chairs because we can't fit enough people in here because 140 new people came. And those 140 people go out and invite 140 people more. How many more is that the next week? 280. That's 280 more people. We're buying more chairs. We're driving all over trying to find chairs for these people. And you know where it started? Where did it start? From this right here. From you giving a balloon to a stranger saying, hey, come check out my church, it's awesome. And that's what Jesus wants you to do. So that's what you guys get to do right now. Take those balloons and you go out there and you give them to a stranger and say, invite somebody to church this week. It's awesome and they have free balloons. Go to it. People, uh, people ask me, why do, you, why do you stay in kids' ministry so long? And then you see kids like that, and, I, and my response to that is, why wouldn't I? That, that's so awesome. They get so excited about so many things, and, and their excitement just spreads like a wildfire, and I love seeing that. I love seeing people come to know Jesus through a little kid, and it's pretty awesome. So, and you're going to see if, now to a few stories of... Uh, people who have come to know Christ or come to be a part of this church because somebody invited them. And the first one you're going to hear from is Miss Bree Bosley. There she is right here. Good morning, everybody. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> All right. Um, not all of you probably know me. Most of the youth do. So I'm Brianna Bosley, and I'm a senior, and I'm in the youth group. And when I was told that I have the letter N, I was really excited. It stands for notice. And I was really excited because that's actually a really important reason of why I started going to Glenville in the first place. 
And first, I'm going to tell you how I started going to Glenville and why noticing is actually like a big part of it. So first off, I was a Christian before I went to Glenville, and the last church that I went to, I didn't feel noticed. I didn't really feel connected to the people, and it was really awkward for me, I thought. And when I felt like I wasn't connecting with the people, I thought that I wasn't learning a lot, and I wasn't learning about God more, and it was really just weird for me, and I, I didn't really feel noticed there. And then I would pray to God and ask him to help me find a church that I can connect with the people and I can talk to them and I can learn more about him through that. And then my sophomore year rolled around and I was playing varsity for basketball and I felt like I didn't really know a lot of the girls and I was like a little fish in a big sea because they were all like juniors and seniors on the varsity team and I was just a little sophomore. And I didn't really know anybody, and so I started talking to Ashley and Allison Career, and I started notice I started talking to them because I noticed that they were different than everybody else. Like, I noticed they had a relationship with God, and they just seemed different to me, and they were so nice, and they were welcoming me into their group and everything. And then I just kept talking to them more and more, and then at one of our games after the game, they introduced me to Danny and Shanda Inigren. And that was really important to me because I felt like they were noticing me and they were introducing me to somebody that was important to them and that was one of their youth counselors and that was just really awesome for me. And then after practice one day on a Wednesday, I saw on the board and it said, on our whiteboard it said, um, Team Bonding Wednesday at Glenville Church. And I was just really excited about that because I was thinking, oh my gosh, God is answering my prayers here. And so I was really excited to go there, and I decided to go that night, and they were asking me, they're like, you're going to go, you're going to go, right? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go. And then so I went that night, and it was really awesome. And I felt like everybody was really welcoming, and they were really nice to me, and I felt like they noticed me as a person instead of just somebody sitting there on a chair and listening. And then so I felt like I was more comfortable there, and it was just really awesome. I've been going here for two years now. And so I felt like from that, now I've been able to bring my siblings and they all go here now. And I've been able to invite more people to church. And I have some friends that I've been like wanting to invite to church and stuff. And I've been scared about it because I felt like at my last church, if I wasn't comfortable there, then I felt like how would they get comfortable if I wasn't? And it was just, I was scared about it and stuff. And now I feel confident knowing that I can bring them and that they would feel welcome too. And so I've been able to bring a lot of friends here and that's really awesome too. And so it's really impacted my life, those girls have. And all the relationships I've made here has been really awesome. And I feel like if they were able to notice me, then we should be able to notice people. And we should be able to see the needs in other people and notice their needs and be able to talk to them and be able to invite them to church. And we should be able to see this in at work or in school and we should be able to talk to them without being scared or anything. And I feel like all around us, people, there's people all around us that are craving something bigger and they need God, but we need to be able to notice that in them. We need to be able to see that in the people. And then in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, it says, so you must go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. And you can be sure that I'm always with you to the very end. But it says to go out and make disciples and tell all of the nations. But a lot of the times we don't go and tell people. We don't notice people. And sometimes we think either one, that we notice them. We notice the needs of everybody, but we are too scared to go talk to them. We don't want to go tell them and invite them to church. And we think, what if they think I'm weird? Or what if they treat me differently now in work or at school because of what I've told them? Or two, we just aren't looking for the needs when we should be, and we're thinking, oh, maybe somebody else will go talk to them. I don't need to. They can just go do it themselves. But in reality, we should be the ones that are noticing it, and we should be going to tell them. We should be confident, and we shouldn't be scared because it says, and you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. So we shouldn't be scared about it at all, and we should be able to notice it. So I want to challenge you guys to notice people and notice their needs and be able to invite them to church. Thank you, Bree.
That's very important for our teenagers and our children to know how important it is to invite and to invest in other people's lives. You know, as teenagers and children come in and they share their faith, it's not just teenagers and it's not children. It's also adults. Wherever you are, when God has laid something on your heart and you invite somebody to church, it could change your life and it can even change the direction of ministry within the church. Eric and Christy Dodge are going to come up and talk about the V, which represents verbally. Verbally communicate to others about Christ. Hello, I'm Christy, and this is my husband, Eric. And earlier this week, we received a call from Pastor Bruce challenging us um, to talk to you today a little bit about a verbal imitation and what, di what kind of a difference that can make. Um, when our kids were young, they were probably six, four, and two, um, <laughs> we were invited to Glenville by Pat Tanner, kind of over an odd circumstance. Um, we were actually out to dinner. <clears throat> We were at Cece's Pizza, and um, I know all of you parents who have small children can relate to this, but our son, who was two at the time, kept peeking over the booth at the family behind us. And as much as we asked him to sit down and, you know, leave those nice people alone, they're trying to have dinner, he just kept peeking over and giggling and playing with the, the family behind us. So eventually, we turned around and apologized, and... Um, the, the dad at the table behind us said, don't worry about it. I love kids. And I was actually part of the problem. I was playing with him just as much as he was playing with me. Um, turned out that that was Pat. And if any of you know Pat, that's pretty true to form for him. Um, <laughs> anyway, as we got to talking, um, they started telling us about their church. And we were telling them that we had recently started looking for a new church home. Um, we had been going to a couple different places um, throughout the years and just hadn't found the one church that had connected with us. And so, you know, we would go to one for a little while and didn't really work out, so then we would try somewhere else and we'd stay for a little while. And again, it just didn't quite feel right. So, <laughs> um, he invited us to come to Glenville and we didn't come right away. We actually waited for a little while and then through some other circumstances, um, a few other people mentioned to us that maybe we should come to Glenville. So eventually we came. Um, when we got here, we immediately loved it. We, the first um, sermon that we heard spoke to us. And so after the next couple of weeks, um, Bruce preached a sermon on giving your time and your talents to the church and getting plugged into different ministries here. And I immediately knew that Eric and I needed to be involved in the children's ministry, even if he didn't. So when, the, you know, when he said, there's a card in the bulletin, and I want you to fill that out and put it in the offering plate, and we're going to contact you about that ministry, I did. And Eric cringed the whole time. Um, and then afterwards, because I felt so strongly, we went and talked to Tim um, about the children's ministry. Our kids, our oldest daughter was back there, and she loved it. Our middle daughter was mad that she wasn't old enough to be in there yet. And um, as it turned out, when we got back there, one of the families that had been helping out, um, just that was their last week. They were moving, and they didn't have anyone to replace them yet. So he said, come next week, see what you think about it. You know, we'll kind of go from there. Well, that was kind of a trick. <laughs> because when we got there the next week, he handed us a bag, which they used to keep points. Um, I don't know. I'm sure that you probably don't know what that means, but every group had a bag, and every group did different activities and, and got involved with the, the message that week and earned points, and at the end, if you got enough points, you got candy. It was a big deal. So he hands us this bag, and he says, you're in charge of kindergarten and first grade. And we were like, mm, we thought we were just watching. He was like, no, you're in charge. So that was probably nine years ago. And through that nine years, I'm going to let Eric tell you kind of what's happened. Because of an invitation to church, that Sunday a passion was lit. A passion to minister to kids. Over the last eight years, we've had the opportunity to be involved in children's ministry, upward sports, and summer kids camp. 
We've gotten to play silly characters and skits, lead games and lessons, and actually lead a K-3 children's ministry. I've coached upward basketball and soccer. Christy's coached upward cheerleading. But our biggest passion we learned over the last few years is summer kids camp. We started out just as counselors, as just kind of hanging out, just herding cattle, so to speak. But every year, we became more and more involved. We started leading games, doing devotions, leading lessons. And over the past few years, we've become a little more pushy, thanks to Pastor Tim letting us. And this summer will be the fifth year that Christy and Tim have planned and implemented church camp together. It's awesome. It's going to be awesome, so come, kids. But over the last eight years, Christy and I have seen hundreds of kids give their life to Christ. Tim has given us the opportunity to love your kids, pray with your kids, and minister to your kids. And it all started with a verbal invitation from Pat Tanner over nasty pizza. <laughs> but what I'm most thankful for is that verbal invitation changed the blueprint of my life, my marriage, and my family. Over the last eight years, we strive to be followers of Christ instead of just Sunday Christians. Our marriage isn't just Eric and Christy, it's Jesus, Eric, and Christy. Our kids have grown up in this church, had personal encounters with Jesus in this church, accepted Christ in this church, and all my kids and my wife have been baptized in this church because of a verbal invitation. But the greatest experience I've had is seeing my daughter lead a child to Christ. This legacy started because of a verbal invitation to this church. We're all called to be fishers of men and share the gospel. I'm so thankful that day at CC's that Pat decided to go fishing. I'm so thankful that he invited us here to Glenville. That invitation changed the legacy and the blueprint of my family. So what's keeping you from inviting someone to church? Besides, you're not really inviting them to this church. You're inviting them to have a personal encounter with Christ. You're inviting them to have a personal relationship with Jesus. So as you go forth this week, use those balloons. There's somebody on your street, in your job, that you know who needs a verbal invitation. So this week, be fishers of men and invite somebody. Thank you. Thank you, guys. A few Wednesday nights ago, we were doing a series on stewardship. And sitting by himself before it started was a man. And uh, a couple of us went up and talked to him. And then Steve Hoover comes walking in. And he, he goes, that looks like Dan. He works with me. I invited him to church a couple months ago, and, and he's finally here. And then Dan and Vicki started coming to church just about a month ago, and they have a phenomenal testimony how one man at work invited somebody, and he actually showed up for church, and what God did within their life from that one invite. Let's welcome Dan and Vicki McLean. Hello. We're a little bit nervous about this, so if I pass out, maybe Officer Friendly can throw some water on me, or <laughs> maybe he can hit me with that stun gun. But <clears throat> Anyway, I've been working with Steve for several years now, and I've just been watching him, you know, and, and his, his walk with Christ, and, and what had happened in, in our lives. We, we were married, and we'd, we'd made a mess of it. And I grew up in the church, but I had, uh, I'd fallen away from, from Christ and been kind of running from him for 20 years. And one day I just, just threw up my hands and I didn't want to get divorced. And we had court proceeding that was, that was coming up pretty quick. 
and I just threw up my hands and said, Jesus, I've done it my way. I made a mess of it, and I'm ready to do it your way now. And I got down on my knees, and I prayed, and I said, but it's not going to work if, if Vicky rejects you and doesn't know you. And two days later, she called me on the phone and said, come over and talk. When I got over there, she told me that she'd been watching TV that morning and that she'd accepted Christ. And you could, have, uh, you could have knocked me over with a feather at that point in time. And I knew I needed to find a church. And I knew where there was a guy that seemed like he was, was doing pretty good walk with Christ. So I wanted to come there. And I came on Wednesday night. <clears throat> and uh, we've been coming ever since. And it's, I was going to throw my marriage away. But Jesus saved it, and he gave, gave me a real treasure and a real jewel in my wife here. And, and we've been growing in Christ since we've been coming. So if you know somebody out there, you think maybe that's the last person that would come to church, just invite them. That's when... And as we talked Wednesday night, you know... When Satan gets the most chapped is when Jesus has victory. And when Jesus starts transforming people's lives and starts giving them hope, Satan starts getting upset. He tries to do some temptations and some distractions and causes all kinds of headache. So Dan, Vicki, we're praying for you. And it's going to be a wonderful journey. Stay focused on God. Let the church help you. Let us encourage you to walk after Christ every step of the way. So when you see them... Let's minister to them and encourage them every day of their life. Well, uh, there was a family that came to church just a few years ago. And their name's Fred and Linda Sewell. And they have been involved in our greeters ministry uh, for a long time. And they have a very unique story of how they got connected to Glenville for the very first time. I'm going to ask Fred and Linda to make their way up if they would not mind sharing their story. morning. These are some uh, pretty hard fact or hard acts to follow. Uh, first of all, let me let me tell everybody here how blessed and, and privileged we feel to be part of this uh, church family here. Um, when Linda and I met in 2004, we started out looking for a church that we both would like and feel connected with and be comfortable in. Uh, we had attended four or five different churches. Uh, in the Wichita area that never felt comfortable connected. There seemed to be, never seemed to be a feeling of uh, uh, being, like the young lady said, noticed or, or part of the family. Um, nobody would introduce themselves. We kind of felt invisible. Uh, one evening, Linda and I were having dinner at a Applebee's over on uh, Central Avenue by uh, Ridge Road. And uh, we met a, a young server man who was uh, uh, going to college, and he introduced himself, and we struck up a conversation. Um, we asked things about what he was doing with his life and things like this, and, and he shared that he was in uh, ministry. Uh, these kind of things, uh, just a, a casual conversation, went back and forth. Um, anyhow, he said that uh, he was very happy with his church. And we had indicated that we were still looking and had not, uh, had not found a place at that time. Um, so he invited us to uh, uh, Glenville. And that young man's name just happened to be Justin Schertz. Um, the, morning, the first morning we attended uh, Glenville, we hooked up with Justin. And uh, he introduced us to Pastor Bruce. Um, this was a very a pleasant thing and a very memorable thing for us because we had not had uh, any experience like this in any church that we had attended in this area. Um, uh, 
anyhow, later that day in that sermon that, uh, uh, that we were listening to with Pastor Bruce, uh, he actually was able to work my name into the sermon. Now, I'm not sure if that was good or bad. I'll, yeah. <laughs> but he remembered my name. Uh, anyhow, Linda and I made up our minds right then and there that this is the place for us. And later that year, Pastor Bruce performed our marriage ceremony. Over the years, we've become to love and love the entire church family and feel very welcome and connected here. Would you hold the mic for me? No, I want to hold the mic because I want you to see my hand shaking. Um, I'm usually a woman of very few words, and I will be today. <laughs> Um, I want to say something that's not in my script. Those little blue cards that are out there at the counter, if you don't have them to pass out, I want you to know, I, I'm almost sure 99% of our friends either at church 10 Glenville or some other church, so we're not trying to get people from other church, so we leave them every time we go out to eat. We leave a card on the table as a way to leave a card. So if you don't have anybody you can invite, but that's not an excuse not to invite people that don't go to church that you know. So we attended Glenville for about a year before Fred's job took us out of state. The hardest part about moving was leaving our Glenville church. Believe it. I mean, just after less than a year, it was like, oh, we don't want to leave this church. And it was the hardest part. Once again, we had to look for a church. We found ourselves comparing the sermons we heard, all the sermons we heard to Pastor Bruce's sermons. We really missed Pastor Bruce down to earth, scripturally based and challenging sermons. Pastor Bruce will collect on this endorsement after a while. <laughs> what we did realize is the need to be more involved in church. We began attending small groups. We made friends in Wisconsin and California churches that we still keep in contact with. When we came back to Wichita, we came with the intention of attending Glidville Church and knew we had to get more involved. We pestered and pestered Pastor out. please make us greeters at the door. We have to do something. We don't want to just sit on a seat like we used to. And we have attended many different things, especially right now, the Wednesday night Bible study about how to share our faith, and we really appreciate that. We look forward to the fall season. We will get more acquainted with some of you as we start our small groups. All of this happened because Justin took the time to tell his story and share his testimony while he was at work, even though it was busy, probably a Friday or Saturday night. Justin took the time to talk to us. Thanks. Thank you. You know, you never know the impact an invitation or a com conversation would have with somebody, how it's going to change your life. And you never know when that person that is struggling, that uh, is asking for advice, and how when you impact their life and how you motivate somebody to follow after Christ, where that person will become, where he will serve, and what that impact will be upon your life by serving somebody that is just struggling within their faith. Wade and Carrie uh, Jacobs were very instrumental in one of our deacons' lives in serving them and teaching them and equipping them and just motivating them to serve Christ. And I've asked uh, Wade and Carrie to come up and share their story on talking about eternity. How does it change your life and how they helped others change their life? Well, I kind of think this was more for Carrie to get up here and talk, but... Uh... When she, she called me at work and told me, Pastor Bruce, I'm nervous. It's been a while since I've stood in front of people, and I don't like it. Um, <laughs> thank you, Bonnie. Um, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> but when past, Pastor Bruce called Carrie and said that, you know, he would like her to share this story, I think it was more for her. But when, when she told me, you know, we could talk about eternity or evangelism, uh, something that just popped in my head right then was uh, a little story from when I was when I was a, a boy growing up in church. Uh, I went to a hellfire uh, preaching church, and I was, I was probably just laying under the pews at church. And I remember the the pastor talking about how he wanted a burden for the church for for the lost, and uh, he was talking about he had prayed to God, you know, to, to 
give him something that would give him that burden. And uh, he told about a story when God, he had a, a dream. And he said it was as real as if it really happened. And he said God just, it was like he fell asleep on a couch. God just rolled him over. And he, he was looking into hell. And he just talked about, uh, you know, the screams, the smell. And that to me stuck, has stuck with me. And it just reminds me that there is a heaven and there is a hell. And uh, the choices that people are making when you invite somebody, it's not to come and pay, uh, I'm going to say their taxes, not their taxes, their tithes. And uh, to build the church, it's, it's, an, it's for an eternity. People are going to make decisions. To, heaven or hell is their decision to follow Christ. You know, Christ, to have a relationship with Christ, that's, that's the big thing. But an even greater thing is, you know, it says in the Bible that the smoke of hell is going to be raising, is going to be uh, rising for eternity. And, uh, you know, if we can just save that one person, from hell. That's an awesome thing. And, uh, you know, just kind of going into evangelism too, you know, each one of us have our own little, own little way of evangelizing. You know, my little, my little thing is, is we'll be going to the store or something. I'll just start talking to some, somebody about some goofy little thing. The other day we was looking at furniture and there's a petrified tree or something they was using as a table. And I just said, you know how old that is? Talking to the girl, and she goes, well, it's probably millions of years old. But I got to tell her that, you know, God created the world in six days. And uh, just kind of putting out some ideas out there, you know, that, that uh, God's an awesome God. He's big. And, uh, but anyway, to wrap mine up is eternity. That's the, that's the, this, that's the uh, main thing that we're looking for for church. It's not size. It's not to pay the tithes, not to pay the, the building fund. It's about an, a, a soul that could be lost. Um, I don't like doing this kind of stuff, so. <laughs> I wrote it down. I am sleep deprived, so um, I didn't want to ramble like I'm doing right now. Okay. This, this is a short version of a long story of how Spencer Walker became instrumental in challenging me and ultimately growing my faith. About 15 years ago, I had a Bible study in my home, and um, a friend of ours had told us that these two guys are going to start coming to our church. And um, so I had invited them to come to our Bible study. And if any of you guys know Spencer, he um, is a very passionate person about everything that he does. And he was a new believer, and he had a lot of questions about the Bible and what it meant to be a Christian, and he had a hunger to know God's plan for his life. And I'm going to try really hard not to cry, so. So he and I spent a lot of time talking, and he had a lot of hard questions that I didn't always have the right answer for him right away, but because he wanted to know everything, and he wanted to know it right then, and um, for me, that just kind of makes me a little crazy. I'm a methodical person. I'm logical, and anyway, if you know Spencer, you know what I'm saying. But in all seriousness, God allowed me to watch him transform Spencer's life in so many ways. And as much as he thinks that I helped him, he did the same for me. I had spent a lot more time praying because I wanted God's wisdom and knowing how to talk to him. Um, and I wanted to make sure I was telling him the right thing, so I dug deeper into God's Word. And in the process of Spencer becoming grounded in his faith, I had become renewed in mine. And I am beyond excited to see the man he is today. And he is one of my heroes, and um, Wade and I had um, been in our church forever. And when we decided it was time for us to um, move on, um, we were kind of out of a loss. We didn't know exactly 
how to go about that. Um, Spencer had left and started doing things, and um, we thought, well, we'll just go and visit with them at their church. It was Easter time about two years ago, and um, I'm sorry, I'm taking longer than... <laughs> um, so we um, called him, and I said, I, we don't know how to go about doing this, and... Um, I wanted Emma, our little daughter, to have a connection, and her and Sydney are good friends. And so we decided to come, and we just thought, we'll just try it out through the, and then when summer um, comes, we'll kind of venture out and see what else is out there. Well, um, we came on a Wednesday night, and everything that Pastor Bruce was speaking on um, in that Timothy class um, was everything that we needed to hear. Because we were coming from a broken spirit. And, sorry, when summer came around, we just didn't need to go anywhere because we felt like that this is where we needed to be. And, um, oh, goodness, sorry. And it's just amazing to think that I knew I trusted him because I watched his faith grow. And, um, we're so excited that we are here. Um, I'll get back to my notes. Uh, our E is for eternity, and the last few weeks have really challenged us so, oh, goodness. to <laughs> get busy and start investing in the lives of the people that are, um, God has put in direct contact with us um, so that they will know where they will spend their eternity. And sometimes the easiest way to get the conversation started is to just invite them to church. And um, we're thankful that we were invited. The idea of the sermon for this month was to invite, to get the concept of church in a different perspective. The concept of the church is not what we do right here. The concept of the church is not the music, and the concept of the church is not the preaching. It's not the youth ministry or the children's ministry. The concept of the church is for the people to look deep inside of God's opportunities that he's laid upon your hearts and to build relationships, to invite them to see Christ, to invite them to have the need that was filled within your life, Put upon their life, accept Christ, and see what God can do. There's not a greater story than when lives are in chaos, souls are lost, relationships have been broken, and church has damaged. Then when you come back to a relationship, you come back to a church, and you get a relationship with God, and restoration has been met. Then you can say, it was a good day. It was a good day when God restored my soul, restored my faith, gave me hope into a church. Not that the church can change you, but who the church represents can change you. Because this church, just like in your life, we have one job, and that one job is to go into a community and share the faith and the love of Jesus Christ and allow that invite, allow our faith, allow our life to be open enough that when somebody is hurting, when somebody is watching, when somebody is ready to give up, they can look at you and say, I just need your help. It's not about preaching. 
It's about sharing. It's about having enough guts to talk to somebody when you really don't want to, but you know that's what God wants you to. So our challenge is this is a testimony service. An invite story. Six people from the church told you their story. I want you sometime to tell me your story. And then I want to use your story to tell the church. Because we all have a story. And on Wednesday evenings at 6.30, we are trying to train the church. How can you just tell your story? Bill Hybels calls it this way. He just said it's a walk across the room. Just opening your heart, opening your life, and telling your story. That's what we have to do. Let's go, Lord.